Welcome to Right on the Money, the weekly talk show with interviews you can use to help you maximize your money and optimize your financial future. Before moving forward with any of the ideas discussed on the show, always consult your financial advisor, insurance professional, or tax consultant. Looking for financial help or a second opinion? We can help you in your search. And now, your host of Right on the Money, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator, Steve Savant. In this segment, we're talking about the foundational base of the pyramid of investments with investment advisor representative Roger Sprouse. Now, if you've never seen this, you say, Steve, I've never seen the pyramid of investments. We're going to talk about this. And if you want to add a little bit of visual acuity, and if you write me at steve at rightonthemoneyshow.com, I'll send it to you. Then you'll be able to say, oh, I'll be able to watch the show and actually see the pyramid of all the choices that are out there. Let's get into it. We talk about the pyramid. We're talking about the bottom end, not the top end. We're talking about discretionary money. Right. We're not talking about going to Vegas. Right. We're talking about the foundational underpinning of the entire pyramid. Right. So let's go Egypt now and talk about this. Yeah, well, the most important thing, that, and people don't necessarily start there because of they intuitively know what's the most important thing when I retire. It's building up an income, and an income that they know that it's – the mortgage is going to be paid if you're still paying for that or, you know, paying for the lights and everything else, the food and so forth. And it's building that up. And you want that. How do we want that? We want that in a low risk or high risk spot. I think the average person is going to say, I want that in a low risk. And we build on top of that. So starting with what that income is, how do we make sure that it's guaranteed? There's a lot of different ways to do that. Uh, but then the second step is, is and we're talking about, we talked earlier about green light investments. Mm -hmm. That's usually a good spot for green light investments. Add to that additional green light investments that will lock in gains, not take uh, risk in the market losses and so forth. And then you can build on top of that. What we usually like to build next is, is dividend funds. Uh, that means money that you get a dividend off of that's a very strong dividend that continues to pay you um, and you get an income off of that. But that one would be in a yellow light area. So now we're starting to build on top of that. And there's a lot of different investments that could be in bonds, real estate, um, you know, and those kind of investments. Well, let me ask you something, Roger. Let yeah. me stop you there. At the bottom end, Amer we, all Americans, most Americans, unless you're a military or federal estate employee, we're all going to get Social Security, and that is our pension for life. So we already know we're getting that. That's at the bottom. I'm assuming that's at the bottom of your pyramid. Correct. Okay. That may not be enough for my living standard. I might have to have more than that. Right. So I want to be able to at least, and, and if I'm, and I've gotten so much email, most people say, Steve, I just need to make sure I'm covering with some safe investment, yep. my domestic spending, Social Security does part of that, yep. but it's not going to be enough. Where do I get the rest of it? Right. So that would be in investments that pay you a, a guaranteed income. We might do that. We would do that in a green light investment, like like a fixed index one that pays you a lifetime guaranteed income. Uh, you can also do that through uh, tax-free investments. No, no, I just want to stop you again. Now, this is lifetime income, right? Regardless of how long you – this is the great thing about that kind of income. When you think of a CD or a mutual fund, if you start taking money out of that and you take out so much that – You've lived too long, if you will, and now I've got zero dollars in there. What are you getting next month? Nothing. Nothing. Right. In this fund, if it happens that you live a long time, you kind of win, but this one continues to pay that income for your lifetime regardless of how long you live. I think people that's what I think people that's what they want. They saw, you know, the Guinness Book of World Records, Jean Clement lived to 122 years. Now she retired at 62, so you're talking about 60 years in retirement. I can't even conceive it. Right. That annuity would have that paid out? Absolutely. And the other oh, thing that's important, I think. That I think is is really interesting when I talk to people, I'm amazed at how short people think their lifespan is going to be. Mm -hmm. I, I talked to a 65-year-old th this last week, and, and, and he, I said, what do you think how much longer you're going to live? And he, he said, oh, pr maybe another 12 years or so. No way. This guy likely is going to live much, much longer than that. And I don't think people really understand that they're going to have a, probably a third of their life in retirement. You know, you work all the way to age 60, 65, and probably another 30 years. And I'm just talking on average, some, not somebody through the roof like you just talked about. No, but, but think about the average. The, the 2012 annuity CSO mortality tables came out and said a female average. This is not, you know, the out there number, 88.8 .8 years. If that female is married, she's 93. Correct. Now, look at that number. And that means that half of American women will live longer than that. Yes. So... 
Old Susanna just died in May. She was 116, a tricenturian and a supercentenarian teenager. Yep. She was born in 1899, lived throughout the 20th century, and died just a mo two months ago in 2016. Oh, yes, she's the outlier, but that's today. Correct. But maybe tomorrow, 100, being on Willard Scott's program where he says, happy birthday to a handful of Americans, where well, you could be that person. Yes. I mean, to me, that's totally reasonable. Absolutely. And so that income that you set up that's guaranteed for your lifetime, I think is foundational for a, uh, an investment plan that most people, when we look at their portfolios, do not have anything like that. Think about the, your portfolio and say, say, say that. Is there anything in my portfolio that, that really does that? And most people that have the average 401k, mutual funds, et cetera, they don't have anything like that in their plans. And that's something that's sadly, sadly missing that they need to probably reconsider to look at that type of investment. I noticed that you talk a little bit about how government employees they don't have the kind of options. They're kind of it's set in their, their basic benefit plan. Yep. They have Social Security, but they also have the uh, TSPs. Yes. I mean, there's, they're a little different. Yeah. Well, TSPs are amazingly, uh, they don't really have a whole lot of options. There's about six of them. If you go online right now and look up TSP and see all the options there, you'll be amazed that basically there's six main options they have, and that's it. And 401ks have a little bit more. Maybe they've got 20 to 50 options when you think about your 401k. But there literally are 10,000 different options in investments if you have an IRA mm -hmm. that you can invest in. So my point is, is it, those type of folks ought to, when they either separate from service or have ability to do an in-service withdrawal, just which all that means is I can take money and move it even though I'm still working there. A lot of people don't realize that. Or have an old 401k. Don't leave that lying around. Mm -hmm. Put it in your own IRA. Boy, you just hit a big, big area of my, uh, I like to grind an ax. I just was in Hawaii doing seminars, and I asked everybody to make a, an employment history, to try to go back and say, I worked here from here, here from, all the way back to your 20. Every time I do a seminar live, I find people who have forgotten about some 401k that they had with an employer, and it's still there. I found two people, 20000 and another one at 11000 Money they didn't even know they had. Yeah. So when you say that, this is reality. Forbes, or, or I can't remember if it was Forbes or Bloomberg, they said there's one trillion of money that has never been touched by former employees of 401ks. Wow. I mean, I'm sorry, but that's a big number. Yeah. So yes, it's, it's important. So I tell all our people in our seminars, do an employee history. Try to go as far back and reconstruct it. And let's make sure, did we get that check? Did we get that rollover? Did we get it? Right. You'll be surprised at how much money's out there. Boy, it blows my mind. Yep. Well, let's talk about, when I'm, when I'm talking about the different aspects of this kind of thinking, when we're talking about foundational, I, I, th I just keep thinking people want their bills paid. Yeah. And they want a little bit of a cola. Now, I notice this is really regretful. Social Security, last six years, before the six, last six years, this was a lay down. We're going to get a little bump in Social Security. I always look forward to it. Now, the last six years, three of those six years, we got nothing. Right. Three of the years, the other, and the other three were nothing, hardly anything. And 2017 is point two. That's why you made a, a great point earlier about, you know, folks will look at their Social Security and, and then we'll have a pension and so forth. And is that enough to cover my bills? Even if it is, what I just talked about income-wise, those things probably won't increase as much as inflation will down the road. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to live for 30 years in retirement, mm -hmm. even though that may be enough to start with today, you might want to think about guaranteed income on top of that for down the road mm -hmm. where I can go, okay, well, 10 years from now, inflation will have kicked in and I need to to start you know, going ahead and, and, and setting aside money for that type of deal. So, so that's another reason to, to look at that guaranteed income and to make sure that you've got a hedge against inflation because inflation's coming. I, you know, uh, things don't cost the same. I was looking at uh, my parents just had their 50th wedding anniversary, and at that they handed out a deal that said, you know, what did things cost? And we all got to guess you know, for a gallon of gas compared to what it is right now. Even though gas is cheap right now, it was like 15 cents back when they got married, you know. So the bottom line... It is amazing. Yeah. I mean, I went to prom my senior year at 29 cents a gallon. I mean, you know, to think of those numbers, you know. I think milk was like 55 cents a gallon, some absurd thing. So, I mean, things have changed. And yes, I don't think we're going to stay in a flat in inflation like we've had. It's almost, some people say, even deflation. I think it's going to come back. We have cycles to the market. We have also have cycles to inflation. 
I think people do want to put a padding on top of their Social Security, even if the Social Security is maintaining it today. Right. We don't think it's going to be maintaining it tomorrow. And I don't know what CPI the government's using, but in retirement land, things seem a lot more expensive than pricing a 0.2 increase in my Social Security. Right. I mean, think about it, Roger. 0.2 for 2017. Well, that's all the time we have for the show. Roger, I want to thank you for being on my show. Thank you. And before we go, remember what the good Reverend John Wesley once said, make all you can, give all you can, save all you can. I'm Steve Savant. We'll see you next week right here on Right on the Money. For more information on this week's money topics, just go to our website at www.rightonthemoneyshow.com and follow Steve's daily postings on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. When it comes to retirement, money management, small business, insurance coverage, college funding, or budgeting, we have the interviews you can use.